So the first car that I bought from my own money, interesting because by that time we had already been through the S classes. My father had an S class in New York. We had an Audi, but my business had collapsed. So um, then what happened is we had to sell all these cars and uh, not only sell these cars, we couldn't afford a car even with the hatchback. So the first car that I bought, by the time the business, my father's business had already collapsed. I was, we were all, all me, almost on the street. So. I could afford a Zen, a Zen diesel. So again, I started with the Zen diesel. Hi, I'm Manoj Lula and welcome to my garage. Earliest memory of a car. Um, well, I remember my father wanted to buy uh, an old E-Class, uh, probably the late 70s. And uh, then I remember I was still probably in my third or fourth standard and my grandfather was holding my hand. He's like, do you approve of this car or no? And uh, if only if you approve, I'll ask my son to buy it. So that was the first interaction <laughs> about a car and in fact controlling at that age. So that was that. Yeah, it was a Fiat uh, Padmini and uh, I used uh, all my pocket money to bribe the driver and I started driving the car at the age of uh, probably 11 uh, and, I should, and I couldn't reach the pedal so I used to use a pillow from the house, from the bed, go a little bit in front and try and reach the pedals and, and go around the quiet by lanes and not breaking the law and all of that but uh, it was a small lane so it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's how it started. So, I mean, when I had the opportunity to buy even a Ferrari in the early 90s, I didn't. But again, one of my favorite moments is again from that was when I drove uh, my dad's neighbor. My dad's lived in New York, Manhattan, and uh, he, his neighbor had a 328 T-top. And then my mother said, hey, you go grab the keys and let's take it for a drive. I'm like, how can you ask somebody for Ferrari? No, no worries. He borrows our S-Class, you can, you can do that. So that was my first experience with a supercar. Uh, that was, I was probably 19 years old and I drove my neighbor's 328 Ferrari. Um, from there, almost 15 years of not driving any other car and then uh, straight away the Porsche in 2005. Well, I mean, uh, We've had these cars in, as posters in our bedroom. We've grown up with seeing magazines, grown up with seeing movies, whether it's, you know, Scent of a Woman or, uh, you know, um, uh, your uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2 uh, or Ferris Bueller's Day Off. You, all these movies are associated with cars and then as boys, I mean, either you like, uh, you know, uh, sport or cars. So then the attachment towards cars increased and that, that was why the exposure. In fact, if you see, I think that movie was way ahead of its time. That guy had a old 250 uh, Berlinetta in the garage that looked like this with glass. And that whole movie, the way he had put it in the garage, uh, that inspired me to do this one day. You know, that movie was definitely inspirational. My dream car. That'll be, actually I've got two dream cars now. One is a Pagani. Uh, I would like to actually have a Zonda with the Vera inter interiors. For some reason, I never like the Zonda interiors. And I've been to the factory uh, twice. In fact, I had that signed by uh, the Mr. Pagani himself and, and his son presented it to me when he showed me the factory tour. Uh, so, yeah, that is that is my dream car. And the second one, of course, is Mr. Gordon Moray has just come out with a uh, uh, yeah, T-150 and uh, which is the McLaren F1 was one of my favorite cars and this is again a three-seater with stick shift and the car which doesn't have too much aero and this wing and that scoop. The car lines are so simple that you fall in love with the car but just the way it looks. I think that's very important because it's only performance. Then you rather buy a, an aerial atom or something like that and drive around. But the car I think has to have a combination of performance as well as good looks. And this is one of those rare beauties. These are two of my dream cars. So, uh, let's go to the first car. Uh, 
the first car over here that is because I, as I told you, I had a Porsche 911 and then um, I sold that. And then I got myself a 911 Turbo, which was again the first in Chennai. I said, okay, I don't know driving. I'm not, I'm not a Michael Schumacher and I said, let me buy a four wheel drive. That's one of the reasons why I bought the Gallardo. Again, I have a distinction of the first guy in the country to having kept the car in a living room. Nobody has ever done that. So that is sheer passion. So I think them as a piece of art and not a car. And this car was spec beautifully. It's again the only Gallardo that has got a light on the engine bay. So just here unlock the car. The lights on the engine bay turn on and you can actually see the engine bay. And it's got every single option thing from yellow calipers to you know yellow seats, with the seats, with the roof, yellow dashboard, you name it, this car has it. And uh, it still continues to be part of my garage. So that's the story as, as far as the Galado is concerned. And then after that, I said, look, how can I be away from the great prancing horse? I got this from a friend of mine. I actually barged into his house and I said, look, you're anyway not using the damn car. Just give me the keys, I'm going to take it and go. Like, are you crazy? Yeah, I am crazy. So hand over the keys. And then that's when I want to pick this beauty. Uh, and again, this is one of the most highest spec 430, the cleanest 430. You have again the ceramic brakes, you have the carbon fiber steering wheel, you have the carbon dash and Daytona seats. This car was again fully spec and I picked it up in 2014. Then I picked up an SLS. This car is a design marvel. I think this particular uh, model from the Mercedes line even gives this Italian part uh, counterpart a run for their money from every single detail. I think this is one of the. It'll be, it'll be a, it'll turn into a classic for sure. Right from the crease on the bonnet that goes into the tail lamp, the headlight, it travels all the way to the tail lamp. It retains the the gullwing of the 60s. So after 50 years. Uh, Mercedes decided to build a gullwing and the drama, the sheer elegance uh, without being the so-called Ferrari and Lamborghinis of the world, it still oozes class. Then going to the G-Wagon, I always loved two SUVs or rather three of them actually. One is the uh, Hummer H1 and second is the Defender and third is the G-Wagon. But this car again oozes class because the fact that you can just close your door like as a bang an ambassador a car from the 70s or 80s, that one trick itself is good to sell the damn thing. So this ticks a lot of boxes for me and uh, I hope to one, one day do probably a, uh, a Kanyakumari to Leh Ladakh <laughs> in this sometime soon. So that is that. Now going to the, the ultimate that is this uh, pista. Only Azzurro La Plata Opeco. Opeco in Italian means matte. And um, so I was first scared to inspect a Ferrari that's not even red. I mean, then I moved to black and I moved to, you know, yellow and all of that. And I was like, okay, that's again, everybody's done that, been there. Let me do something that's totally out of the box, something totally different, something that connects the car to history. And that's, you can see the big painting there of the uh, 250 uh, burn letter. Uh, which won the Le Mans. And then I got this idea of adding this little modern element. So I took a historic color like the Azzurro Plata and I did a mat. And, and uh, the lady at the Italia program, there's a special building on Ferrari that's uh, dedicated to Italia and tailor-made. And she said, look, uh, Mr. Lula, this will be the only person who have done this on a pista. I think you should do it. I think you have a great vision and you got good taste. 
go ahead i think it'll be a great thing to do and then we close the lid and i this, this is what you see and uh right from every single detail that is the french flag again that's that's an option to do that also in matte so we, i i had to go with the whole matte theme and uh, all the elements uh, whether it's the interior also we had the french flag in napa leather go through the seats and um you know um uh, the red blue i mean the stitching is white we see the white horse on the headdress is also an option and uh, we we did that and um, the carbon fiber uh, most of the carbon fiber comes standard with the pista but then there's something that goes behind the car uh, between the tail lamps that was an option and we did that and then intentionally on this car i just left the calipers to be black because i thought putting a yellow or red caliper will take away the beauty and the glory of this beautiful paint by uh, attracting too much of tension so i just left that element of having this the prancing horse in yellow and i didn't want to put the um, yellow calipers uh, and i think the car looks very elegant and stunning it's not overdone it's not underdone it's just perfect and it turned out to be excellent and it's probably one of the best pistas in the world as you know and uh, from almost all websites even hr owen has called me and said look guys who sell cars to elton john and eric clapton have told me your pista is probably one of the best picked pistas in the world and i felt satisfied hearing that so that's that's it that's that's the final car and Don't stop dreaming keep fighting for your dreams uh have some passion because uh life without a passion is like a face without a smile so i think it's very very important if you love cars uh of course there's no fast or escape route to get these things immediately it takes while it it takes years of hard work pain but then having said that work for it and uh, this will be yours one day for sure go for it